This looks a lot worse than it really is, I promise. The precision measuring tools laid out before you will be used to blueprint the block before we proceed any further. The tools and procedures demonstrated in this video will be performed using the Fowler micrometers graduated in 10 thousandths and Fowler's 1.4 inch to 6 inch dial bore gauge. First up is a few sets of filler gauges. These contain various strips of metal that have a predetermined thickness. These can be used to measure your rod side clearances, your crank in play, and your deck for flatness. Next up is the Almighty Micrometer. These are graduated in 10 thousandths, and this kit includes a 0 to 1 inch mic, a 1 to 2 inch mic, a 2 to 3 inch mic, and a 3 to 4 inch micrometer. These are measuring standards. They contain a known distance, and in this case it's 3 inches, so that you can zero your micrometers as well as other measuring tools to ensure their accuracy. To utilize one, pick up the mic that needs to be zeroed and place the standard between the anvil and the spindle, or the measuring faces. Rotate the thimble using the ratcheting stop. This clicking action allows you to provide a specific amount of torque each and every time you take a measurement, resulting in accurate and repeatable measurements. Your micrometer should read to the distance of the standard. If it does not, you need to adjust your micrometer. In this case, the 3 to 4 inch micrometer zeroed out using the 3 inch standard. Let's show you how to zero out a mic using the supplied tools. Refer to your manufacturer's instructions to ensure proper adjustment. My 1 to 2 inch micrometer is off by half a thousandths or so. Fowler's adjustment instructions state that we would turn the barrel using the supplied tool to correct the reading. Sorry for this awkward angle but you should never drop the standards, so I'm trying to give you the best angle while ensuring the safety of my tools. Anyway, the barrel should turn easily. This one has never been adjusted, so it's a little stubborn at first, but once moved, it's easily adjusted to zero. Notice how it constantly zeroes while you're using the ratcheting stop to apply the same amount of torque each time. Now that your tool is zeroed, you will need to know how to read them. First we know that all measurements will be between 3 and 4 inches because this is a 3 to 4 inch mic. Next we focus on the numbers across the bottom of the barrel. Each numbered line is a hundred thousandths and each small tick between the numbered marks represents 25 thousandths. These numbers on the thimble are thousandths of an inch. The numbers that run up the barrel represent 10 thousandths. Let's take a look at this 1 to 2 inch micrometer and read out the measurement. Since it is a 1 to 2 inch mic, we know the measurement will be 1 inch. The number 7 on the barrel is 700 thousandths. The two small lines after the 7 count for 25 thousandths apiece for a grand total of 50 thousandths. So just from the reading on the barrel, we have 1.750 inches or 1 inch and 750 thousandths. Now we move to the sleeve, where you will be comparing the lines with the first horizontal line on the barrel. The number below or equal to this line is added to the total measurement. 20 is the number just below that first horizontal line, so we will add 20 thousandths to the 750 thousandths to make 770 thousandths. The last step is to see what line best matches the number running up the barrel. Here we have an 8, to make a grand total of 1.7708 inches. Next up, we have our Harbor Freight Digital Calipers. These are cheap and inexpensive. To ensure their accuracy, we use our micrometer standards to see how accurate they really are. I grabbed a 3 inch standard, but you should use one within an inch of what you're measuring if you have it. Simply take several readings to ensure the accuracy of your calipers. Every time I release slight pressure, it's over by half a thousand. We will note that they are over by half a thousandths at three inches. Lastly, we have a dial bore gauge. This tool has a limited travel, so it includes various length anvils and spacers to read anything between 1.4 and 6 inches. You will notice this measuring head will only accommodate measurements from 2 to 6 inches. If you need to utilize the 1.4 to 2.4 inch range, you will need to swap the measuring heads. This is easily accomplished by screwing off the old head, swapping the spacer, and screwing the new head into place. We touched on dial gauges during part 2 of degreeing the camshafts. 
So if you have already watched that, this will be much of the same, but it deserves a place here. Let's talk dial gauges for a moment. We have our most accurate gauge that has graduated in ten thousandths, but has a very short travel. This gauge is great for measuring run out and cylinder bores. Next up, we have a gauge that has graduated in thousandths, but has an overall travel of one inch. This gauge is useful for numerous tasks, and they are very affordable. The last gauge is accurate to the half thousand and has an overall travel of a half inch. The idea is to choose the most accurate gauge you have with enough travel to complete the task. Happy boosting!